I, I'd like to introduce uh, the viewers to uh, my art class. I'm very, very proud, I must say, of, of all of my art students. There isn't one who isn't doing just fine. And I would like to encourage uh, any of you home viewers who have not taken up uh, or practiced art, even just to your own amusement and amazement. You, may, you would be surprised at uh, how much fun it is and how uh, much you can gain and how well you can do because there are many, many uh, beginner's books you can buy, just a little inexpensive, I think six or seven dollars most of them uh, sell for beginner's books that give you the general idea of perspectives. You know, a picture is all light and shadows. It's just a matter of your conceiving and expressing. I would encourage any of you viewers to, if it's possible, to attend our art class here, that you live close enough to San Diego, you could attend. Uh, we'd be very happy to have you. And I'm sure uh, my two teachers and monitors, Belly Stafford, And uh, Paula uh, Gr uh, Rich Greenwood, turn your face around and let them see your pretty face. These two girls uh, monitor uh, the meetings, which we hold uh, the art class, Sunday at uh, 12. And they're having a lot of fun doing it. And the students all enjoy them. Now, some of the students are really doing much better than they ever anticipated. Uh, I can see one student there, uh, Gordon Hook. Yeah. The, the lovely painting he did of a girl all in fur, furs, I really had a difficult time believing that he did that because it is so <laughs> magnificent. It truly is magnificent. And I'm sure he surprised himself, didn't you? Now, I haven't seen some of the work uh, that you all have been doing uh, lately, but uh, maybe after a bit we can pull some out and show them uh, to the camera. But as I say, there's not one uh, that really hasn't uh, done really quite well and gained a great benefit. Here's another boy that really surprised me, uh, Gordon Jenkins. A uh, painting he did there, uh, I, I really had a difficult time to believe that Gordon did it. And yet I shouldn't because he has, just like all people have, that spark, that flame, that creative infinite intelligence within you. That all the difference, the big difference between genius and we, uh, the average person is that genius had learned to use this uh, higher self. He's learned to tune in to his higher self. And uh, we brothers, that's the only difference. Of course, that is uh, a big difference. But the thing is that any one of you can learn to do this. And so uh, I would encourage anyone uh, who hasn't picked up uh, the brushes, either in pastels, uh, acrylics, or oil, or even charcoal, and I'm sure they're coming out with many new mediums now because it is fun. It's a wonderful pastime. And even more than that, it's a wonderful way that we brothers can come to you as you attune, open up to us, as you attune to us, for us to get through energies of other importances in nature. Now, uh, it, it, the, any painting that you pick up, it doesn't have to become a masterpiece. You can enjoy and get the thrill and the, and the joy and the benefit and the happiness and the creative feeling from any picture that you do. And yet, there is nothing wrong with going to the library and looking through some of their uh, illustrated books with pictures or photographs and copying one of them, sometimes it's, it's a great joy. You can learn something. And not only that, uh, but this can help you attune to many of your past lifetimes. I'm sure you have all 
had experiences of when you paint is showing your past lifetimes, haven't you? Yeah. It's just a wonderful, wonderful pastime, and yet used in this creative way, uh, you can create something that you will be proud of, and in years to come, you will be much more proud than even now. Uh, Leila's not here, no? No. Leala did a painting when she first came that uh, she was totally amazed at herself. And uh, it's, it's just beautiful. I'm sure she'll enjoy many, many years of having it on her walls. And as I have uh, told the students this morning, uh, it is a wonderful way for people when they get in their autumn years to spend time uh, at home a painting in any one of the mediums uh, and it's a very inexpensive it doesn't cost a fortune to set up uh, for for your paint work you can start with the with the watercolors or even charcoal and uh, do a few pencil sketches first you'll find that it grows on you because we all have that creative spark within us and you just want to do more and more. I know when I had a little cycle to doing painting many years ago, when I sneaked a few days away from my regular work, that I just wanted to paint the whole walls. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I wanted to. Uh, it was a very invigorating and inspiring thing for me. I, I enjoyed it. It's so wonderful to, to, it's a very creative thing. So any of you that haven't, haven't tried it, do get a little beginner's book and, uh, and uh, try it, you'll like it. And I do want to say that uh, uh, I'm very proud of each and every one of my uh, art students here. Now, the wonderful part about it, if you uh, people at home, uh, your home viewers there, will, uh, will endeavor, you will find that you receive uh, Inner help from we brothers, we space brothers, do work with all students who are uh, endeavoring to uh, improve their psychic awareness or their creative expression, that we do work with you. So this is something that most artists have not promised their students. Uh, but any of the students here will tell you that they feel the help. They feel transcended and lifted and uh, as I spoke to to Billy just yesterday and she's doing what I know is going to be a magnificent painting of healing she said uh, when when I'm doing this I get so transcended when I sit back to look at it all I want to do is sit there and look at it and of course the more she looks at it the more she oscillates with it and the more transcended she becomes and of course, this is uh, the light, the help, the love of we brothers coming to her. And I'm sure what she's doing is most of course, beautiful. Video is one of the expressions, but also music and um, what, whatever you're doing, as she mentioned, I mean, if you're baking a cake or a, being of service to mankind, that there can always be creativity in that. And um, I'm going to let him start because his painting is up there, then we'll talk a little bit about our own. But, but Uriel, when she was saying us, and we brothers, again, if you haven't, or if you're not familiar with Uniris or you didn't see the videos, you haven't heard the panel discussions about who Uriel is, um, she's a very advanced clairvoyant. Um, she was a co founder of Unarius with her husband, Ernest Stella Marmon. And um, she was constantly, just like here, encouraging the students to bring out their creativity, but it wasn't like your normal art classes where you're learning to, you know, particular colors, even though she mentioned you can get some beginning art books and stuff, it's learning to, first of all, that there is a continuity to life, that there's a progression, there's a spiritual progression, that we all have a higher self, and that these masters, such as you know Da Vinci or Beethoven or any of the creative arts, dancers, I didn't mention dancing, um, when they lose this physical body, and, and for some of you, maybe reincarnation is a new thing or it's something you haven't quite um, decided if you believe in yet, but um, that's a whole nother class. 
Uh, but anyway, when these masters uh, continue on after their physical death, quote unquote, um, they're learning, they're teaching on the inner planes, and uh, so when she says, you know, be, be in tune with us, it's be in tune with um, these master painters and musicians and dancers and so on and so forth. So in the painting that you'll be getting, where Billy Stafford that she mentioned, she showed her as one of the art teachers. She's still teaching art once a week in El Cajon. Um, she tuned into Leonardo da Vinci and it was like he was, and she'll tell you this to this day, you know, even though this was painted many, many years ago, that, you know, she just held the brush. That's all she did. And this masterpiece came through. And that's what you, what, what she's really talking about, inspirational art, which is also what this could be called today, inspirational art, visionary art, what you see in a lot of the Unary's paintings and so forth, is um, what is impinged in this painting? Does it touch people? Like the Mona Lisa, people come, it's the most famous painting in the world. What happens when you're viewing that? You feel something. With a really good art, again, she mentioned being transcended. You're taken out of this, this space with my art, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. It's um, lifting people out of depression and a lot of other things. So I'll cover that, but I'll let him talk about his painting. Um, this, this little bit of video that you saw with you were able to talk to our students, uh, very important to realize, are there any art students in here? Yeah, you found a class? Yeah, me too. Um, well, if you couldn't tell, anybody who came into the class, for the most part, mo none of us had had, or, or very few had had, actual art classes. And so she was constantly encouraging us as students of Unarius through this process of alignment with your higher self, uh, and we call it becoming in frequency rapport with this higher intelligence, this higher energy, to express it outwardly. It's very important that you do not stop that from taking place. And so it's not even, and you heard a little bit of it there, it's not, it's not the end result isn't necessarily always what has to be perfect. It's always about the process and, and giving yourself that opportunity to express in a positive, constructive way. Allowing yourself to uh, leave behind, possibly, you know, your work environment where you're going through stress or a relationship environment where something's happening to you and giving yourself the opportunity to set your mind upward, the focus of your consciousness upward and inward and allow that inspiration to come through you. Now, the problem most of us have is we've never been taught how. You know, I mean, you go to school, you go to art class, I'm going to set this thing up here and you're going to draw it. Or, you know, I'm going to set this model up here and you're going to draw that person. Or we're going to be working in pastels, and so you do this, then you do this, then you do this. And, which is all well and good because it gives us a focus to learn. But what it doesn't do is help us with this whole process of allowing our consciousness to feel and be open to this inspiration. And uh, whether uh, you understand it or not, and they're just beginning now to, to begin to figure this out in classrooms, where they're just learning other things other than painting and art, even the acknowledgement that you have a higher self that you have a, a better part of your consciousness, or they call it, you know, a, a creative part of your brain, whatever term you want to try and pigeonhole this process with. Uh, with that acknowledgement, people get more information and more help. They get more help taking tests. They get more help doing anything and everything that they're attempting to do in a positive and constructive way. So today we're going to talk about the Unarius way. And whether you... Um, as Lonnie said, believe you've lived before or not, um, there, there is help and therapy and healing in doing art. And you have to acknowledge, obviously, the desire to want to express in a positive way. Otherwise, it can't happen. But I will say this, and, and people say, well, does it really work? I can honestly say that every student that has ever been contacted or touched or been involved with Unarius and began this process of expressing creatively, I saw things happen that were, you know, if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I would consider miraculous. Um, we had students that, uh, as examples, one of the guys I grew up with who wanted to be a rock star in the worst way. And uh, as I always said, I knew him for years and years, and, and he had a case of white guy disease, like you could not believe, you didn't have any rhythm whatsoever, but he wanted to play music. And um, when he was the guy that, you know, you go to a party and you pick up the guitar and everybody starts throwing stuff at him, knock it off, you're terrible. He made contact with the Unarius about the same time I did. And as he studied, 
and and began working out some of these past blocks and lives that we are, we've talked about and opened up his consciousness and began to express in a more positive way, he turned into the most amazing musician. Uh, guitar, keyboards, harp, uh, it was just a, an amazing sight to see. He would actually play in classes for us where the beginning of class as a, as a moment of attunement or inspiration, he would just sit down and let it happen without any sheet music in front of him, just let it play. And it was, it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever heard. But that's the type of help that everybody has if we're acknowledging it. Yeah, and also another one was a, a surfer. Oh, you know, Douglas. He, Douglas, he had never painted before, and he came in, and you know, it was like a, a matter of maybe a, a few months. Yeah. You know, and he's just turning them out like one one time a week. I, I was just like, gosh, I'm still working on mine, and you know, he's got six, and um, now he's he's showing them all over the place. Uh, beautiful, beautiful paintings. So, and he painted murals, and that's another thing. It's not just limited to you know, just a piece of paper, if you come down to the Unary Center and you look on the walls, you know, like even the parking lot wall, it's got this huge mural on it and uh, the inside walls and, and in fact what, what you were seeing, Uriel, in the what we call the Star Center, it's like a, a three-dimensional, it was actually all the floors as well, but they got ruined in the rain, but it's like being in a, inside a Tremplio painting of Atlantis. So both sides and the roof now and um, you can, I think it'd be fun to tell about the, the camera crew that came and the, and the tree. Yeah, yeah, it was a very, this, was, this happened years ago. When we first finished that, that, that painting inside that, that room, uh, you know, we have these, uh, which I wish we had pictures of, but um, we did the, you know, the Atlantean scene, you're going out into this temple and you see the ocean on either side of you and you know, the horizon line is beautiful. And then you have, we had these pillars, square pillars coming up on either side all the way down the room, and we mirrored, put mirrored in the middle of this this painted on pillars, and painted, you know, I painted some uh, branches coming around that pillar and going over the top of the of the mirror and you know, coming off the other side, and you know, worked really diligently on it to get to look really good. And a guy walked in, uh, a, a news guy walked in one time, and he and he looked at the whole thing, filmed it, and then we were talking with him later outside. He said, well, "That's really beautiful. How'd you guys get that branch to grow out of the, the wall?" <laughs> well, we, we painted it. No, the one that went around the mirror, you know, the one that came out of the wall and went over the top of the mirror. Well, that was painted on. No, it wasn't. He argued with me for like 10 minutes. That wasn't painted on. I, I, I swear to you, I did it. and couldn't convince him. So those are the types of uh, wonderful things that happen with everybody and anybody who takes part in this whole process of exploring your own inner contact, your own inner awareness and fanning that flame, no matter what it takes, don't let anybody stop you from creating uh, your art and, being, and, and following through on that positive expression. And again, what was said earlier as far as, you know, when these masters uh, pass over, so, you know, a Beethoven, when he's teaching on the inner planes, he would be one of the brothers that came through. So they, it Did was... He actually come to him, Beethoven? Yeah, actually, in the, in the books, you'll, if you read, the, we have a... We have over, what, 100 volumes? And uh, there's a series called The Pulse of Creation that were the beginning and start of the uh, library. And when he went to these inner planes, and, and uh, Unarius teaches that there's seven planes of light, seven planes of, of learning. One is for healing. Uh, well, let's see, there's healing, there's leadership, there's science, there's um, uh, art, which is, includes poetry, muse. Education, uh, education and spiritual. So as he would go to these different planes and visit them, the beings on that plane would speak and, and give information what it's like to live there, what they're learning, what they're doing now in those worlds, how it's people evolve to them. Germany, you know that? Yes, exactly. It's along those same lines, okay? So now what Unarius teaches then is with that very awareness, the beings on Muse, the, the, the plane of inspiration and art, is where, if you are open, you're going to get that inspiration. Yes. So are, are more accomplished painters than better channelers? <laughs> yes, but it's, it's a two-way street, and here's why. Because they have spent many lifetimes working towards that. So now you can begin to say, well, you know, how did Mozart happen? How could Mozart write a symphony at five? Why can't I write a symphony at 56? Well, he had spent many lifetimes doing that. So it was, for him, it was like breathing to come into this, his life and, and write a symphony. And, and to do it very well. But you see, he had developed that, but he was also that 
connection from the inner planes was happening very strongly. Along with that same thing though, if a person is open to that inspiration, even if they haven't spent a lot of lifetimes developing that, I, again, I've seen fantastic things come through somebody who, you know, you would think, well, they, they've never studied, they've never, how come they were able to do this? But if you're aware and you're open, even if you haven't had lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of working on it, you can still receive that inspiration and it will manifest itself wherever you're doing it.